So, colonos colonoscopic appendectomy is it possible? <laughs> so, no disclosures except thanks to organizers and special thanks to Dr. Ramesh Adnari. Unfortunately, he is not here. He saw my video and uh, asked uh, the organizers to include this. Thank you very much, uh, organizers. The, uh, I was searching and thinking since last almost 10 years and various devices were, were uh, the instruments were devised and institutional ethics committee approval was taken. The willingness of the patient and informed consent was taken. CO2 insufflation in colonoscopy was done and readiness for laparoscopy if needed. Uh, for that matter, we are already doing uh, flexible endoscopic transvaginal appendectomy, transvaginal cholecystectomy and transgastric cholecystectomy also. So, uh, this 72 years old gentleman diagnosed as appendicitis. City abdomen proved uh, uh, the uh, diagnosis and request of conservative management was there from the patient side and the relative side. Uh, considering the age, I requested him to undergo colonoscopy to rule out uh, secondary uh, appendicitis, whether there is any osteal tumor or like that. So the osteum was wide and inflamed, was suggested to undergo colonoscopic appendicectomy and if failed, then laparoscopic appendicectomy. So the instrument needed are very simple, the biliary balloon, 12 mm by 13.5 by 15 and right to pour forceps and an endoscope, uh, endolope. Uh, bowel preparation is not needed. Uh, irrigation machine might be needed. This is the video. So we read the cecum. Patient had a right-sided diverticuli eye also. So that uh, biliary balloon entered into the ostium and uh, it dilated and if there is debris, we can flush that. So we dilated it for complete one minute. We released it and then again dilated so that uh, to confirm that there is no bleeding, extra dilatation is not there. There is no breach in the mucosa. So that uh, balloon dilatation was done uh, for almost a minute so that proper stretching of the muscles are there so that I can invert completely the uh, appendix along with the meso appendix that is important. If meso appendix is thickened as the BMI is more, if the patient's BMI is more, this procedure is to be avoided. So then rat tooth forcing, we uh, little bit of modified that rat tooth for forcing, we applied vacuum to the plastic sheet so that uh, it can catch hold of the tip properly. And the appendicular lumen can collapse. We have patentized this particular force. So catching hold of that, uh, uh, we need at least six to nine, eight, nine times this catching hold of the tip. And when we started pulling it, we need to, sometimes the pull was coming till the hepatic flexure. So it was great force, it was needed, and that vacuum prevented slippage of that, I think the bus came out. And uh, now you can see that I am pulling it and the pull is coming up to the hepatic flexion. Yeah, it has come up to the hepatic flexion, and uh, then that appendix is completely inverted. So proper flushing is done. Now uh, the difficult thing is how to uh, loop that uh, base, the appendix might be, the double ring and endoscope might uh, be very handy here, but here along with the proper suctioning, uh, the, the loop juggled down to the base of the appendix and then it applied. You can see the identical junction there. So it was really difficult. It took almost 10-15 minutes, multiple uh, attempts. Then that was applied. This can even be cut by the endocut, the appendix for the aesthetology. So 
that is how the difficulties faced were the failure of uh, failure to evert the appendix. We attempted this particular procedure in 32 cases since 2018, and uh, COVID period was little bit of government could complete the procedure in five cases only, and applying loop at the base uh, is very tricky and difficult. Uh, which patient should be attempted? The younger, uh, short history of uh, appendicitis, early appendicitis, they are better. Non-recurrent with lesser BMI. So these are our, our five patients. The duration of the illness was one to three days. The TLC count was not much. Uh, BMI was around less than 30 in all patients. Uh, operative time was ranging from 40 to 38 minutes to 72 minutes. The attempts to evert that were almost uh, six to nine. Bus was there. There was fecodic in only one case, and loop application took almost 20 to 22 minutes. Ultrasound findings: the diameter uh, of the appendix was around six to eight millimeter. Uh, failed patient. Uh, most of the patients were uh, having more than 30 BMI. Uh, there were seven patients with less than 30. Uh, 30 BMI. Uh, duration of the symptoms was more uh, uh, more than three days in 20 patients and less than three days in eight patients. Anesthesia needed was only sedation. Hospitalization, they were ready for discharge in four hours. Uh, as per the VA score of pain, you can see the single port, the three port, the pain is uh, comparatively very high. And that is a small red line down. The VI score was less than one in all five patients. Uh, there are reports available in the literature, but all the patients they had they had inverted appendix. I don't know what is this inverted appendix. Uh, pediatric surgeon might be uh, helping in me uh, about that inversion appendix. Uh, that is the procedure which was done by uh, pediatric surgeon way back. And uh, all these inverted appendix had inflamed appendix and they were removed as polyps. So colonoscopic appendectomy. This is again a literature, but again there was a uh, mention that it was the inverted appendix. There, there are some reports in literature where design and instrumentation of new device, uh, they have devised this type of uh, instrumentations. Some uh, have gone in with modification uh, the snare and the biopsy force was entering like this and they did uh, appendectomy but this was again an inverted appendix so these are the various uh, things available this is a fantastic case which is available in this literature by Tauche et al uh, where they did uh, um, virtual uh, colonoscopy delineated the appendix there was a lesion uh, at the ostium a flat lesion at the ostium, so they did a full thickness resection. So full thickness resection was done and then uh, peritoneum was entered and the meso appendix was tackled and the rent was closed down by the uh, clips and a common loop was applied over all the loops. So that is the literature available. Um, these are the various types of uh, eversion of the appendix. Uh, this is the inverted appendix, how it looks like. Uh, endoscopic retrograde appendicitis treatment, ERAT, that can be uh, done in cases, particularly uh, this case, can be helpful in mucosal of the appendix. It will drain complete uh, mucus material and uh, it will decrease the morbidity and chances of serum peritonei. And also, colonoscopy can tell us about the cause of mucosal development, and then we can go ahead with laparoscopic uh, resection. This is the US patent, which is for our uh, thing, the instrument. In conclusion, the endoscopic appendectomy and cholecystectomy is also feasible, needs more standardization. Endoscopic cholecystectomy, transgastric transvaginal is also possible. The uh, only difficulty is that we get the inverted image. So what we did, we overturned the uh, monitor itself so that we are getting a proper uh, image, not inverted image. So 
Thank you very much. These are short videos of transgastric and transvaginal. Uh, that was all. So, colonoscopy definitely has some place in appendicitis. And uh, this is to be standardized, proper instrumentation is to be devised, uh, proper protocols are to be made, some legal structure is to be given to that. Uh, so, definitely there is some place to be colonoscopy in appendicitis. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very innovative talk. I request Dr. Gwakir.